Hi everyone, welcome to the bath with me. Um, I forgot to do my pregnancy vlog this week. It is now Sunday and I usually do it on Friday or Saturday. But uh, this week I basically just forgot. I've had a shitter of a week. Um, and luckily Cass, who works for YCM, your same mama, and she's one of my best friends in all the land. She texted me and she was like, hey, um, is your vlog coming? I was like, oh my God. I usually, the latest I, I typically do it is on a Saturday. It's now Sunday evening. And I was like, oh my God, I'll get it to you as soon as possible. It's like quarter to 10. And I knew I really wanted to have a bath. So I was like, oh, I know, just kill two birds with one stone. Um, so here I am coming to you from my bath. Uh, how's it going? I, this week, I am 27 weeks pregnant and now about five days. I'm feeling really good. Pregnancy wise, I'm feeling great. Baby's moving a lot, so much. Oh, I bought, I invested in a, well, it's not really an investment. It didn't cost so much money. I went to Bed Bath and Beyond the other day and I got a full length pillow, like a whole length of my body pillow, which was amazing. And um, I just hug it, I snuggle it, I wrap my legs around it and uh, I'm, I just like full on cuddle it. And it's the best, it's so good. It's like having a third person in the bed so I'm glad that Poet's spending most of her night in her big girl bed. Um, but that has brought me comfort this week. So guys, Mercury is in retrograde. I wonder if any of you guys are feeling the effect of that, because I certainly am. Um, it's just been a really hard week, especially just the last sort of three days uh, business wise for me I the job that I was talking about that I got offered I lost that job because I'm pregnant and they wouldn't insure me because of my pregnancy which is really annoying uh, but luckily one of my best friends in the world is doing the job so at least someone I love has taken the job so that was a hard pill to swallow that actually happened a couple of weeks ago but in when i'm reflecting back on the month i'm like oh there's been so many bumps in the road this may uh so that was like a little snafu mainly because for me it wasn't about sort of missing out on the role per se but it was just the role equaled being able to um, build my mum her little standalone cottage on my property in Australia. And I've had an architect working on it and this film was going to pay um, for my mum's little cottage. So I just was excited for her to have her own space because when we get back, she does have her own sort of granny flat, but there's no toilets in there. It's just sort of these standalone bedrooms away from the property. And it would just be so nice to her to have a proper house with a laundry and a kitchen. And cause she shares all of that with us. She shares the laundry, she shares the toilet, she shares the kitchen. Um, and there are outdoor toilet blocks, but in the middle of the night when she wakes up and she's sleeping up there, she has to go out and use the toilet from the toilet block. So it's not ideal and I was really excited to build her that place. It wasn't gonna take very long because we were doing like a very cool little eco cabin with my company Lost Retreats, which has just launched. Um, sustainable, slow living eco homes that you can rent, little cabins. Uh, and so we were just gonna build <clears throat> sort of a bigger version of that on the property for her. And so I think initially I was really disappointed about that, but I'm such a big believer in, you know, let go and let God. There's a greater meaning for this happening. And um, 
let's just move forward. And I'm just not, I, I don't have the pattern of staying in a low vibrational space. I'm pretty good about being like, well, you know what? I guess that just was not supposed to be my path. That was not supposed to be my journey. I need to wait a little bit. I will build that place for her when we have the means and, and that's okay. That's just not the way it's supposed to be right now. So I can typically see uh, the silver lining in every situation. But then right after that, I had the trauma of like the dog incident, which I haven't gotten into too much detail, but you can still look. This is my very last wound is healing from it. I was actually supposed to get stitches there, so that's gonna be a big ass scar. Um, I broke my toe randomly. I've just sort of had, and then this week, oh my goodness, this week I've had, um, and it's funny because when I was reading about Mercury being in retrograde, they were talking about, um, it's a communications thing. It says the planet of communications backward dance in Gemini is going to uncover secrets, mess with our communication, underline that. I just got bitten by an ant. Okay, okay, there's an ant. There we go. I save all creatures, by the way. Ants, bees in the pool, bugs in the pool, anything, anything floating. If I see like anything alive that's going to die, I always save it, um, which is funny because we have a squirrel right now, an injured squirrel that we found today. So we're taking care of that. Um, but it, he seems to be doing okay. I, I said he, it could be a she, I don't know. Um, anyway, but yes, mess with our communication. That is exactly what I found this week. Communication has been really wonky. People um, that I engage with, you know, things get misconstrued or there's a sensitivity or I'm being really sensitive and we're just kind of missing each other. And, I, and Mark and I, that was happening for us. He's been my rock solid man this week where... I'm just like, everything fucking sucks. <laughs> it's been a really hard week and I've been in tears and just work stuff, big changes within my company and, um, you know, looking to the future and having to make some shifts and, and switch ups and just stuff that's like really super emotionally draining. Um, but we will get there. I'm just a... I'm a very highly sensitive person and I'm also a massive empath and I have a lot of compassion for people. And when I take on other people's sort of stress or suffering, like I'm in it, I'm in it with them. I am there, even if it's not happening to me, but if it's happening to someone that I love, um, which has been the case this week, it just shatters me. It just shatters me. I hate it's just so hard. And then I had this week as well, I had an Instagram live with this beautiful, this beautiful mother called Mary and her little daughter, Aya, has SMA, which is spinal muscular atrophy. And uh, she will die without treatment. And I saw this picture of this little girl about maybe six weeks ago when I was reading an article on CNN and it just sort of popped up and she completely spoke to me. Her spirit spoke to me. I saw the picture. She, I felt like this connection between the two of us. I don't know why this little girl's 16 months old. And I just said to Mark, I have to help her. I have to help this little girl. She needs me. I, I, I want to do everything I can to help this family. And like mother to mother, to be in the sort of situation where your child is dying and the drug, the only drug that will save her life costs $2.4 million. Who has access to that kind of money? It's unbelievable how many families just have to watch their children die because a drug company is charging $2.4 million for a drug. 
And it just got me really worked up and passionate and angry. Uh, so I ended up doing an Instagram live with her this week. And because it's just been such a sensitive week and just seeing her face and she bought her little daughter Aya on, I just lost it. I just lost it on the live. I could not hold back my tears. She was crying. I was crying. You know, typically when you're doing a live and there are thousands upon thousands of people watching, especially as the host, you're supposed to be the one asking questions and keeping it together. That didn't happen for me this week. Um, and I just, the good thing is, is through the live, we raised a lot of money for her and they are about 75% to 80% of the way there. So if you're listening to this and you want to look it up, her Instagram handle is at little.aya, A-Y-A-H, and her name is Aya and she has SMA. So you'll be able to find it quite easily through my Instagram every day. I'm doing stories. I've been doing swipe ups. I've been reaching out to celebrity friends, so many celebrity friends and asking them to post and they have been. Um, so we've raised so much money, which is wonderful. And someone got it to Kim Kardashian and she posted about it, which is worth so much because she has 225 million followers or something insane like that. And she did a swipe up link to the GoFundMe. She did two stories. And so that was like, that was a little mini victory this week was that um, the story got out there to more people. But I, I just like, it's been an emotionally heavy week. I've been so focused on trying to help this family. But then also I have extremely close people to me going through really hard things and you know, stuff with my business. And there was just like a lot this week. And then the communication side of things, I was like, oh my God, like communication wise, I'm trying to be so concise and like own my communication and like take a look at the way I communicate and texting sucks. Never text people anything that's emotional. or It's just like a, it's just a bad way to do it. You know what I've been doing? I've been doing voice notes, which has been so much better because then they, you can hear a person's intonation and you can really understand their intention and their perspective, the way they change just the tonality of their voice. So I've been finding voice text really helpful, but whatever, it's been sort of a rough week and I know next week will be better. Um, we're still in retrograde until June 22nd. Um, but here's the other thing I really wanted to quickly talk about. I've only got two minutes to talk about it, but I'm probably going to have to have a home birth. That was another thing, um, that I found out this week, which was just to kind of add it onto the pile. So I'm so used to birthing, um, in a birth center at the hospital with my midwife, but I just found out that the protocols for COVID have changed things and you can only have two other people in the room besides your midwife. And for me, this year, I was planning on having all my best friends as usual, um, Cassandra, and I was gonna have uh, Kat, who's my doula and one of my best friends, uh, and then Claire, my bestie, who's always at my births, um, and then Mark, and then Cassandra's husband, Stu, who's Uncle Stu, and he's you know the godfather to our parents. He was gonna photograph the birth and film it, and then all the kids were going to be there. My mom was going to be there. Woo, free for all. You know, everyone in the hospital. But then we just found out that that can't happen. And so now I'm considering doing a home birth. However, my house is 35 minutes away from the hospital. And legally, the uh, group uh, midwifery practice cannot go to a home birth if it's uh, more than 30 minutes away from the hospital. And I'm 33 minutes away. So I was like, oh, can we just like shave off the 30, the, the three minutes? But no, like it's very, very strict. So we're considering renting a place near the hospital and birthing in a rental. So it's just sort of um, something that I have to wrap my head around. And I'd love to hear any advice or thoughts or what to do. Do I just break up with the idea of having my family there and do as I've done before or do I try something different?
I just don't know. It's about to cut out, but I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to me moaning, um, but I know next week will be better. And I'm sending love to anyone who's also had a really challenging week. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.